good afternoon everybody. My name is Bailey Langford and I'm a sophomore at NC State University. I study zoology, creative writing, and Spanish. This past summer I was fortunate enough to get into contact with Dr. Camila Folgueras at the NEMA lab at UNC Asheville. I started off in her lab as a research assistant before I transitioned to studying my own organisms at the UNC Asheville Bee Hotel. Before I worked with the Bee Hotel, whenever I pictured bees in general, I thought of something like this. This insect is actually invasive to the Americas. It is a European insect that was brought from European colonists in the 17th century. Native bees, like the one shown here, are far more important, both in species diversity and just environmental importance, than the honeybee. There are over 500 species of bees native to North Carolina and over 20,000 species known to science worldwide. Most native bees are solitary nest builders. The females will pick a nest site and lay several eggs in a sort of cell line. In the wild, these bees will lay their eggs in wood, in grass stems, in, um, or in pre-existing burrows. Artificially, we can create hotels like the one shown here that just creates more habitat for these bees. However, it also creates an artificially high concentration that can allow for, um, for more parasitism and just higher predator impacts on the bees. This is actually a model of the Bee Hotel found on the UNCA campus. We have, for the purposes of my research, I divided this Bee Hotel into 12 boxes of equal size and three rows of four. There are many different material types in each of the boxes of the Bee Hotel. Box number one is just highlighted up there for you in red. This Bee Hotel is equipped with a roof to protect it from the rain and just uh, other elements that could mess up the materials of the hotel. However, this roof also shades the top row. Bees are most active, especially when, they're, uh, when they first start hatching after they've been warmed by the sun. So I was able to observe insects in the bottom two rows a lot earlier in the morning. Bee hotels on, the Bee Hotel on the UNC Asheville campus is quite large, it's like, it's really, really big. But Bee Hotels can also be much smaller, they can be much more um, inconspicuous, and they can contain only one type of material. These are Bee Hotels uh, that are found in, on and around NC State campus. Our project goals were to assess the population of bees at the UNC Asheville Bee Hotel, both adults and immature insects. We wanted to look at the overall numbers of insects, how many families there were, like the diversity, other insects that we might find there, such as like spiders, beetles, that kind of thing, um, and their parasite abundance. We wanted to also look at how the bees used the different materials in the hotel, whether there were preferences for the different bees, whether there were preferences for the largest number of families, and whether certain materials had higher parasite loads. The basic material types in the bee hotel are sticks, paper tubes, uh, small bamboo, bamboo clusters, and logs. So we had a bunch of different material types in there. So to study these pollinators, I started collecting the adults using these really, really fancy aspirators that we built in the lab. Um, I tried to collect a representative sample of the adults from each box with at least you know, five to 10 specimens from each box. But like I mentioned, the boxes on the top were really shaded. And because of the times when I was able to go to the hotel, I ended up collecting fewer adults from these boxes. I then euthanized the adults with 95% ethanol vapor and froze them and pinned them from frozen. We kept them all separated by box number. The frozen insects, I then ID'd to family and put in my data sheet. These pinned insects can now serve as reference specimens in the UNC Asheville collections and also as educational specimens for um, the classroom initiatives that the NEMA lab does. On a separate day, I went back to the Bee Hotel and I collected a representative sample of nest materials from the boxes. I made sure to get at least some of each nest material from each box. I froze these as well, just to make sure nothing alive was gonna come out at me, <laughs> and I later opened them. We took detailed data on the contents and we kept the contents from each individual material separated in these little tiny petri dishes. And the petri dishes are then separated into larger uh, containers by material number or material and box type. 
Then to look at the diversity that we have going on here, I took the total number of insects. Now this does include like beetles and everything else that we found in there. And the total number of distinct families into these two heat maps. On the heat maps, the bright red boxes have the most number of insects or the most number of families, and the bright blue boxes have the least. As you can see, box number seven is by far the reddest box uh, in that first heat map over there. And that is because we found an entire nest of ants in that, uh, in that box. However, on the other heat map, box number seven is also tied for the most number of families, which indicates that it has both high species abundance and high diversity. Boxes number five, seven, and 10 were the warmest in both of these heat maps. To standardize the maps a little bit, and just to get an overall better estimate of the diversity of the different boxes, I added up the total number of insects and distinct families and divided it by two. Boxes five, seven, and 10 are still the warmest on this heat map. Obviously, this isn't a perfect diversity index measure because we can't control exactly for what sort of representative sample I got. And also, I only identify the insects to family. In the future, I would like to identify them to genus and get a more complete picture of the different diversity there. We noticed that the warmest boxes were all concentrated in the middle and slightly towards the left of the B Hotel. And I would like to continue to collect data to see if these trends hold across different bee hotels, if it's something to do with the material composition or something to do with the environmental conditions of those different boxes. We also created this graph to showcase the different numbers of insects and specifically parasitoid insects that we found in each of the different material types. As you can see, there was a statistically significant difference between the number of insects, both parasitoid and non-parasitoid, in bamboo clusters as in logs. The bars denote the total number of insects observed over the summer, and the error bars are their uh, bootstrap standard deviations. We use permutation tests for the intergroup comparisons. As you can see here, the error bars are pretty large because I only had data from one bee hotel over the course of one summer, and we had a couple of pretty significant outliers. Uh, in the future, I want to continue to do this study, including more summers and more bee hotels to get the data a little bit more standardized there. So there was recently a guide published to NC State Extensions by Dr. Elsie Youngstadt and Meredith Faber that gives this like really incredible overview of how to build a bee hotel, who usually lives in a bee hotel, and how to manage the bee hotel more generally. It's really easy to build a bee hotel. You can have one in your backyard, or there's a lot on college campuses because these bees are just really important to the environment. There's a lot of native plants that have formed specific relationships with native bees um, that are more suited to pollinating them than honeybees are. However, my research indicates that it is important to research the bees in your area before building one of these hotels because different bees prefer different nesting types, different materials, and uh, the different materials may also have an impact on their natural predators. Environmental factors like height, location, and sun cover can also influence the effectiveness of a bee hotel. This coming spring and summer, I am collaborating with Dr. Fogaris at the NEMA lab and Dr. Youngstadt at NC State to just gather more varied data from the different bee hotels. I will be looking at samples both in Raleigh and in Asheville, and we hope to add more bee hotels to our Asheville sampling as well. This summer we're going to focus on parasitoid trends, whether there are certain materials that are safer for bees, and whether the bees actually prefer these safer materials, or whether they prefer the ones that are easier for parasites to get into. We are also going to look at uh, emergence boxes, which is a technique that can help bee hotel owners um, allow their bees to hatch after overwintering, while still cleaning out and maintaining the bee hotel. I want to give a special thank you to Mike Vance, who helped me open the logs, get everything cleaned out in there, Isabel Hardwick, who spent hours and hours cracking open bamboo tubes for me, Dr. Willett at NC State, who helped us out with the statistics, Jacqueline Hampstead, who runs the Bee Hotel, and Dr. Phil Garris at the NEMA Lab, who has just been like so incredible and helped me with my research. Thank you so much. Yeah, will you go back?
back to your analysis slide. I don't know if I hit the, the this one? Yes. yes. Um, I know it all comes down to the math, but was there not a statistical significance with paper tube and log, or were you not there was, concerned about that particular one? There was the, we were looking mostly at the, the biggest statistical differences. We really, like, I started this project during the middle of the summer, and so we didn't have time to run a bunch of statistical tests, unfortunately, before that. Um, but as you can see that, I know there is one also, it looks like, between bamboo and the log, but the biggest difference here um, is between log and bamboo clusters. Okay. Can I have a follow-up? Yeah. Um, with, the, with the number, so with the number of parasitoids that are in the, the bamboo cluster and the bamboo, I would have thought that perhaps bamboo being kind of a sturdier material wouldn't allow for as many of those things to get in versus some of the, uh, some of the others. Is there maybe a reason for that? Or is that is that something that's surprising or I'm just not in the field and like, it's so easy, so on. The <laughs> probable reason is, um, well, it's twofold. That this bee hotel at UNC Asheville has not been properly maintained for a number of years now. So the materials are really old and things can sort of, you know, parasites will keep coming back and back and back. So they may have just um, figured out ways to get in or may have established populations in there. The other thing is that parasites are really, really good at getting to their host animals. So they can actually stick their ovipositor um, through the, like going with the grain of both wood and bamboo. And they can also come in at the back, which is, is pretty unfortunate for the bees. <laughs> yeah, Mom. So if you were gonna build another bee hotel in Asheville, what would you primarily use, you think? I would not build another bee hotel in Asheville until I did my research this summer. Okay. To sort of really? figure this out. Um, I know that- We're trying to get her to build one. <laughs> <laughs> I know that Dr. Youngstead, uh, uh, she has a data set that I haven't uh, had a time to analyze yet, but she did indicate that her work was mostly focused in like natural materials, like different stems. And she indicated that blackberry stems were for some reason more resistant to parasites, but they were also less preferred by the bees, which doesn't really end up helping out very much. So what are the kinds of parasites? That... There are so many. We have, so many. There's okay. pollen mites, there's different types of mold. If you go to parasit, well, excuse me, parasitoid wasps, we had like this one. I'm terrible with these names, but this is um, a lacustrid. There were so many of those. We have chalcedoids. Um, you would open a, you know, a stick and you'd find maybe 30 chalcedoids in there, which, which is a lot. So yeah, there's a lot of different kinds. That's very cool. Thank you so much. Thank you.